Last week, Benedict and I posted a video related to bread and especially flatbread and tortillas. I showed how I made a tortilla that was made of primarily ground flaxseed, which would not spike blood sugar much at all for most of us. Toward the end of the video, we talked about testing our blood sugar with a store-bought low-carb tortilla, which we were intending to do, but then I realized that a few years back I had done that very thing with my own go-to low-carb tortillas, the Olay Extreme Wellness brand. So rather than reinvent the wheel, I decided to play portions of that previous test to demonstrate that, for me at least, this type of tortilla does not present much of a problem for spiking glucose. Let's start with the footage from last week, which we did not show then due to time limitations. Finally, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about these babies. This is the store-bought version. This is only one of many store-bought versions. When I first uh, was doing low-carb, you could hardly find these at all. And if you could, there was usually one brand. Okay. Now there's like four, five, six brands of different low-carb mm. tortillas in your grocery stores right. uh, in America, Australia, Britain, and so forth. If you if you live in some village, you know, on some mountain, you're not going to have a grocery store and you probably won't get these at the market, hence the flaxseed tortilla. And by the way, you don't have to do them in the microwave. You can just cook them in a pan. Now, with these, they are so good. Number one, they taste like real tortillas. Uh, I can't tell the difference. The okay. taste is exactly the same to me. Right. Number two, great texture, uh, nice taste. I mean, just there's, there's nothing bad you can say. But one of the things I love so much is uh, they're very convenient. You don't have to make anything. You know, the problem with making a lot of these things, even yeah. though it, it's not all that much time, but first of all, you get all the ingredients out. That's several minutes. Yes. Then you put it all together, several more minutes. Put it in the microwave or, or bake it on a, in a pan, several more minutes, a couple more minutes, and then you get it done. Then you put all your ingredients away, several more minutes. So by the time you're done, you've used up quite a bit of time. One hour. <laughs> well, probably not an hour, but quite a bit now. To show how quick these are, we're going to do a time test. That's right, folks. You heard it right here on Beat Diabetes. Benedicta, my lovely assistant, is going to show us how much time it takes to get one of these ready. Yep. That we've already purchased in the store. And to make it official, we're using an official timer. Timer. And so when I say go, okay. I want you to open that up and pull one of those babies out. Ready? Uh -huh. And we're going to see how much time it takes. A minute, two minutes, 10 two minutes. minutes, 10 wonder, minutes. Wonder how much time it'll take. One hour. All right. Are you ready? Yep. On your mark. Get set. Go. Ooh. Boom. Wow. How many seconds was that? Whoa, that's like five. Five seconds. Took five seconds <laughs> to get that ready. <laughs> How did you do it? How oh, in the world did you do it in I five seconds' time? I just ran so fast to no. it. I grabbed it and then ripped it all off and bam, bam there it was. There we go. Uh -huh. Looks like a tortilla. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Smells like a tortilla. Smells like it. <laughs> Tastes like a tortilla. Tastes like it. Now, theoretically, mm. this should not raise blood sugar. If you look, it says... Uh, well, four net grams of carbs for a tortilla. Four net grams. Four net grams. That doesn't mean there's four grams. There's 15 grams. 11 are a fiber. Now, the problem is I've heard from a number of people who say, yeah, Dennis, I know these things are low carb. I know these things have just a few net grams. Right. But they don't work for me. I've tested okay. myself and it goes up. Mm. Here's what I say. These things are so convenient and they're so good and they're so easy and they're relatively cheap. I know you can buy all kinds of keto wraps on Amazon, but they're yeah. typically uh, about a dollar a piece or a little more. Uh, these are much cheaper. And you just go to your grocery store, buy your groceries, buy some keto uh, wraps, uh, tortillas. My suggestion is this, find, uh, try several. It's worth a try. Okay, you know, yeah. Uh, what what I say is, don't trust keto products, but test keto products. Okay. Don't trust, but test. Okay. So we're going to do this, and I'll get back and report. We're not going to do it today because we've got other things going on. It's Saturday night, and we're about ready for our big party. 
<laughs> but uh, one, uh, in the next couple of days, we are going to test a couple of these and we're going to find out if they work. Now, I've tried several different ones and I had one that surprised me in a nasty way. It, the, it raised my blood sugar significantly okay. around the three and a half hour mark. Yeah. So we'll test these. But these I've tested before and, and they seem to work for me. If these work, they are so good and so convenient and just so nice. Mm. It would be a shame to give up. That's why if you've had a bad experience with store-bought tortillas, mm. what I would suggest is buy another brand, a different brand, and see if they work. Try at least about three brands, right? Mm. And test them. And if you can find the one that works... Uh, you stick to that one. You stick with that one yeah. and you'll be blessed. All right. Well, we will be back later. Thanks for watching. And I will report how we did as we test our uh, low-carb tortillas. Yep. Now, these tortillas are not really low-carb if you look at the total carbs. But what makes the low-carb tortillas low-carb is that the companies that make them have really ratcheted up the fiber. And since you can deduct the fiber and the fiber carbs from the total carbs, you end up with low numbers for the net carbs. In this case, I have here tortillas made by the Olay Company, and they're called Extreme Wellness High Fiber Carb Lean Tortillas. That's quite a handle. According to the nutrition information, each tortilla has 15 grams of carbs, which is on the high side. But out of those 15 grams, 11 grams are fiber carbs. And that means that, theoretically at least, there should only be 4 grams of carbs in each tortilla to affect our blood sugar. Now, there are a couple of reasons I wanted to do this experiment today. One reason is some of you have left comments and told me that low-carb tortillas just don't work for you, and they still raise your blood sugar significantly. And as I always say, trust Mike your blood sugar meter more than you do the nutrition info that's on the package of your foods. And the other reason I wanted to test these is that quite a while back, I had some meal, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I ate two low-carb tortillas and for some strange reason, I randomly tested my blood sugar three hours later or a little over three hours. My glucose was elevated way too high. I think it was something like around 175 or 180. The only thing I could think of that would have caused that was the low-carb tortilla shells I had eaten over three hours before. Since then, when I make a pizza using a tortilla shell base, I use only one low-carb tortilla shell. Before that, I would often use two shells bonded together with a layer of cheese in the center. Now, was that high reading a fluke? Can we reproduce it here? <laughs> well, we'll find out. For today's test, I'm going to have two tortilla shells with nothing whatever on them. No meat, no cheese, no spaghetti sauce, just two scrawny tortilla shells by themselves. Doesn't sound very appetizing, does it? But by having these shells by themselves with no fat, no protein to affect the test, and only water to go with it, we should see these tortillas at their absolute worst. The glucose spike I get by eating them alone should be about as bad as they're capable of creating. And since that one test I did that had such a high number occurred over three hours later, I'm going to do a one-hour post-test, two-hour post-test, and a three-hour post-test just to see if there's a delayed effect. If I can get good numbers after eating these tortillas at one, two, and three hours after eating, they should be safe, at least for me. You'll have to test yourself to see how your body responds to them. Again, with four net grams of carbs each and a total of eight grams for the whole meal, if you want to call it a meal, theoretically, I should be able to handle those eight grams without much trouble. But one thing I've learned is to allow Mike the meter to have the final say on what I can and cannot eat, and to trust him far more than nutrition info or fancy books written by celebrity doctors or just opinionated people. Each time I test myself in these three post-meal tests, I'll do it on camera so you'll get to know as soon as I do what these low-carb tortillas have done to my glucose levels. Okay, we are nearly at the one-hour test. I'm waiting for my timer to go off. I've actually got two going on here, but this is probably the more accurate one. So I will go ahead and, uh, well, it's about to go off. Bam. And I'll go ahead and set that for another hour and get that started. 
and set this for an hour just to make sure. And let's see what has happened at one hour. There we go. And you're going to find out just as soon as I do where we stand with the two tortilla shells. Okay, well, that says 113. Not too bad. That, as I've said before, one hour is when I normally peak, but with these tortilla shells, you can't be too sure. So, so far, so good. Not much. Uh, a 111. So, 111 is uh, great. Now, I need to interrupt myself and make a quick clarification. Uh, 111, uh, after two hours of eating anything, is not perfect in the ultimate sense. The average young person who's got a good, uh, healthy metabolic system and zero insulin resistance uh, would probably be in the 80s, two hours after eating those two tortillas. So I'm not saying it's perfect. But for me, at my age, with the struggles I've had to eat two bread products like this and not be any higher than 111 after a couple of hours uh, isn't bad at all. Uh, so I was probably maybe going too far saying this is perfect and so forth, but it actually was uh, pretty good. Let's just put it that way. We had a 113 at one hour, 111 at two hours. Come back in an hour and we'll see what we get at three hours. And the timer is telling us that it is time for our third post-meal test. This one is at three hours. Okay, well, at three hours, it is a 101. So, uh, we had 113, 111, 101. These two tortilla shells have uh, passed the test with flying colors. And if we added more fat and things like cheese and so forth, probably wouldn't even have gotten the rise that uh, I did. So there you have it. This brand of tortillas works for me. But just to be on the safe side, I almost never have two tortillas at one meal. One is my limit. With pizzas or with a breakfast burrito, I'll have one tortilla and one only. You may be thinking, Dennis, you went to a whole lot of trouble just to be able to eat one tortilla at occasional meals. Yeah, I guess I did, but for the privilege of being able to get cheaper tortillas that taste better than any of those homemade versions that I've ever done, and only take five seconds to pull out of a package versus maybe 30 minutes to get out the ingredients, make the tortillas, put away the ingredients, and then do a little kitchen cleanup, well, that test time was well spent. And of course, since then, I've tested these same tortillas with food in them or as a one-layer pizza numerous times, and they have never failed me. When I go to the store and see four or five brands of low-carb tortillas, I do not hesitate. I go straight to that Olay Extreme Wellness brand low-carb tortillas. These, in my experience, have been tested, vetted, and mic approved, and I see them as old friends. And if you think that this is all a little bit fanatical, well, maybe so, but let me just say this is exactly how those of us who beat diabetes deal with foods that may be a bit suspicious. This is how we roll. We take nothing for granted. We test and prove and demonstrate to ourselves that various foods are truly safe for us and keep us from excessive glucose spikes. And once we do find foods that pass that test, we rely on them again and again, meal after meal, and we occasionally will test them again just to make sure that they still work for us. The name of this diet is not really a keto diet or even a low-carb diet. It is a low-spike diet. And keeping those spikes low means bringing our fasting glucose under control, and our A1C will quickly start heading toward the normal range. And that, my friend, means beating diabetes. Did you ever wonder why YouTubers are always asking you to like, share, and comment? It's not really that we're all egotists and we love to have a lot of positive reinforcement. It's because we know that the YouTube algorithm keeps track of these things and rewards videos that have a lot of viewer interaction by promoting them to other people. So when people go to YouTube, they'll find that video near the top of their feed, and in turn, these videos will become more popular still. 
So if this channel has been a blessing to you, help us out by clicking the thumbs up, making a comment, and sharing it with someone you think might benefit from it. Thank you so much, and God bless you.